Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. Our mission to Jewel continues to develop. Now, um, I have now brought up the engine stage for our Deep Space Explorer. So in the last video, what we did is we launched the, the top stage here with all the life support and the living habitat and docked it to the ARC station around Kerbin. Um, and in this last, or in between videos, I brought up the bottom stage. And the reason I didn't show it is because this stage was insanely heavy to lift. And in particular, trying to maneuver this in space uh, for the docking was incredibly slow and tedious. You can see I've even like doubled up on my RCS blocks. Uh, this thing was so slow. It just took forever to very, very, very delicately uh, position it for a docking. And so uh, it would have been just too long and too slow and too boring. So I've just gone and fast forwarded beyond that. But basically what we've got here is a massive number of pure liquid fuel tanks, no oxidizer in these tanks. It's pure liquid fuel and one nuclear engine. If I bring up the Delta V chart, um, the actual Delta V numbers are going to be off because right now this would be the Delta V of moving the entire station. Although we still have over 7,000 Delta V for this entire station if I wanted to bring it with me, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but what's notable uh, and again, I guess it's still going to be a little bit off, is the thrust-to-weight ratios. Right now, this is still with this phase, which, uh, stage, which I'm about to detach and just deorbit here. Um, but this one nuclear engine is going to give us a tiny, microscopic amount of thrust. But it will have a lot of delta V. It'll accelerate very slowly, but it can burn for a very, very, very long time. Actually, I guess if we had this up, you can see that each one of these tanks here can burn for 23 minutes solid. So that is a long, long time to accelerate. I think overall, once we detach, we'll have uh, north of, so of like 10,000 Delta V in this ship. And I, I don't know, based on what I can tell, it looks like this will be enough. As far as I can tell, we'll need about 4,000 Delta V to get to Joule and another 4,000 to get back, which leaves me about 2,000 to maneuver in Joule system. Uh, since I'm not looking to orbit, that will hopefully be okay. And I think my math includes uh, reinserting into the Kerbin orbit over here, which is important, of course, because this ship cannot land. It's designed uh, solely to re-enter Kerbin orbit and then dock here again. And then ideally stay in space is what I'm going to look to do. And then uh, just refuel this, basically, so that we can use it for another mission later on. Anyway, with that, let me go ahead and... Um Drop down to the Space Center. I'll show you the ship that launched this. It is brutal. It is absolutely, absolutely brutal. <laughs> it's it's the least sexy looking ship I've ever done, but it needed so much Delta V. And one of the complications is I don't have the 3.5 meter engines unlocked yet. I do have some of the 3.5 meter um, fuel tanks unlocked. And I guess one engine technically, but I don't have the uh, the majority of them. So I've got the Deep Space Explorer bottom two is what I launched over here. Um, I had to like I, I came up with an initial design that was sexy and even had actually I showed you the first one. Hold on. Uh, load, 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 load. Oh my god, these designs are just brutal, just brutal. Uh, the number of parts and interconnections. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, that's so not what I was looking to do. Whatever, just drop there. Um, don't save. Let me, let me show you the first one here, just the bottom, which, uh, certainly looks much more decent, but it doesn't have enough Delta V. So then when I was like, okay, I, I need to radically redesign the bottom here so that the math works out. And I didn't want to just clear this design. I want to keep it just in case it was a decent base to continue from. Um, but let me zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So we've got a fairing on this top bit that covers the actual engines. Again, these are all just pure liquid fuel, no oxidizer, because I'm using a nuclear engine, which is much more efficient, if low power, it's much more efficient, um, and it only needs liquid fuel to do that. So that's the top bit there. And then I had this base, but I was like, uh, especially with the amount of air resistance that I would get with this fairing, this is still more aerodynamic than not, um, this was not quite going to cut it. And in particular, the last couple of stages there are very poor on thrust to weight and wasn't able to, um, wasn't going to be able to get us into space. So then I built this other one. This is a half million dollar launch ship. It's probably the most expensive ship I've ever put together. And just look at this beast once it uh, actually loads. It's got to work out all the staging here. Do, 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 There we go. Oh, come on. Oh my god, it's brutal. All right, there we go. Um, so we have the top bit. And it doesn't actually have a fairing. And the reason is um, I couldn't, the, the uh, all the struts over here 
would interfere with the, the fairing because it's kind of annoying. The struts attach to the fairing, which doesn't actually give you any more structural integrity. So I had to launch without fairing, which meant a little bit less um, aerodynamic, but, you know, I suppose not critical. And again, so all the liquid fuel, the nuclear engine, the docking port. That's all that's on here. It's got, uh, oh, and a reaction wheel, plus a little bit of RCS thrusters, which A, help with this docking, and B, will help with uh, when my ship returns from Jewel, hopefully, um, this will help it redock with the station. The current ship design only has uh, 40 units of mono propellant, though, so it's actually really not going to have much mono propellant to help it dock when it comes home. Hopefully, well, we'll just have to take it very, very, very careful and line ourselves up from a little further away, probably. And see, these engines aren't even uh, actually aligned properly vertically, which I just noticed, and it's kind of driving me crazy, but didn't turn out to be a problem. And yeah, and this is a giant stage at the bottom. No, this stage here is not asparagus staging. This is this entire stage burns simultaneously and just drops off. I just needed a ton more thrust to weight to get us started. Um, and so I just used like sort of a four dummies approach, to just add a bunch of powers at the bottom. And this whole thing just gets dropped off one go from this one decoupler. It is the most brute force, sickest, ugliest rocket I've ever built. It's insanely expensive. It's not necessarily the most efficient, especially with no asparagus staging down there. But uh, the problem was, um, that even in the asparagus staging would have still had to have like four engines drop off simultaneously, if not more, just because there's so much weight on top that it's pushing. If you don't have this many engines burning at the same time, you're actually just not going to have enough thrust to take off. So, because um, what happens with asparagus staging, right, is every time you drop off a pair of these tanks, for example, I'm also dropping off the extra engines. Sure, the ship is getting lighter, but is it getting lighter enough to compensate that it's got fewer engines? Over here, yeah, mostly. Although you can see by stage nine, we're actually below one thrust to weight ratio. By that point, we're high enough that it's okay. There's not enough atmosphere pushing us back. So it turns out to be fine. But down here, you can't do it. And there is no real way for me to asparagus stage this bottom bit um, and have it have enough thrust to weight on fewer engines. So it was just like, no, nope, they all got to burn at the same time, dump the whole thing, and then start the next stage, which works out okay. So it was crazy. Actually, the actual launch went went fine. It was remarkably stable. I do have enough struts. Look at it. They're all over. We got like spider webbing in there. It's just the most ridiculous thing ever. Anyway, we are going to go ahead and uh, can I actually hit the exit button? There we go. It's being hidden by some stages. That's also the first time that my staging display has ever been. I've had to scroll my staging display. Part of the problem is that the, um, oh, there we go. Oh. Hey, apparently I completed a quest to build a space station around Kerbin. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, okay. Uh, let's go back to space here. Do, do, do. Um, and part of the reason the staging is so complicated... Oh, yeah. I gotta get rid of all these. These are all debris bits. They should be. These are all some extra tanks that I was jettisoning on some tests here. Well, let's, I'll take care of that later on. Um, we want to go over here. Do, do, do. I'm just littering space. Just littering space. I'm not a very good space citizen. Mostly I litter it with dead green kerbals, but other than that... Alright, so over here... So you can see the staging here is it dumps one of these tanks at a time. This is a giant asparagus stage, and it's set up to dump one tank at a time, which does mean... Once we start going, we're going to be kind of lopsided, because at some point we're going to have half the tanks on one side gone. Um, but we'll see. What are you talking about electric charge running out? You're fine. Yeah, you have lots of electric charge. Chill out. Sometimes, um, sometimes uh, TAC light support really likes to whine about the electrical charge, even though it's perfectly fine over here. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and decouple the ascent stage. It still has um, actually a good amount of fuel left. I'd overkilled how much fuel I had in my design, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and decouple that. <clears throat> then I'm going to switch to this, which still has some monopropellant left. So if I have RCS on, and I do, and then I hit backwards, we can push ourselves away from here. There we go, a little bit further. And then we will turn retrograde. And I'm going to go ahead and start a burn here. Fly by the station. I'm going to turn off the uh, jet fuel for a second here so that we don't accidentally burn up our station. 
There we go, that should be safe range. And go ahead. And just make sure to drop the periapsis to negative numbers. Well, as long as it enters the atmosphere, it's going to be fine. But I feel better if it goes negative. There we go. And switch back to the space station. All right. We need to make sure that our food tanks, our supply tanks over here, are completely full. So what I have to do is I have to go and alt-right-click on all of them. And then I have to... Nope. Come on. I clicked on the wrong one over here first. There we go. This one. So now i got to redo this. Because I didn't have the right one selected. And they had different types of goods. Okay, there we go. So then I'm going to click out, out, out. There we go. There we go. That's completely topped off. And we can just decouple at this point. Uh, there we go. Undock. So we are now controlling... Are, oh, that's kind of funny. Why is that like that? How come there's um? Oh, the bit of the coupler, I think, still has to be worked out. Turn off the RCS so we don't use it. There's not. I guess there's not much of a pushback force when we decouple here. Can we safely turn away? We might have to use a little RCS to push us back. Uh, no, it looks like we're going to be fine. I'm just manually sort of turning away from the station here. Try not to clip our solar panels. The camera angle available, there we go, is very awkward there. Much better this way. And go for a bit of a burn. So you can see here, yeah, we have a little over 10,000, or around 10,000 Delta V. I was actually expecting a little bit more, but I guess we'll take that. And just try to push ourselves away from the station safely so we don't hit it on future maneuvers. Um, what's going on here? Well, I guess it's fine that we still have the, uh, the casing. It's a little odd. There's like two jettison buttons here. I don't actually want to jettison the engine. Um, why isn't it not, it's like it's, it's missing part of the decoupling effect. It might just be a visual thing. I have no idea. All right, anyway, so we are now safely away from the station. We should be able to plan a maneuver, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So here's what we want to do. We want to first escape the sphere of influence of Kerbin so that we can plot our next our next move. Our first move is to leave Kerbin, and we know for sure we're going to want to pump ourselves into a higher orbit because our ultimate target is Jewel over here. Right? Right. So, Kerbin is moving from right to left, and if we want to get into a higher orbit, we basically just want to be going higher and faster, so we sort of want to be burning leftwards, or escaping Kerbin leftwards, is I think the most accurate way of describing it. So I'm going to set a maneuver over here, and push it there. If we happen to encounter the moon, I mean, there might, there's tons of ways to, to plot this out, potentially, so we can slingshot off the moon, but that's not going to happen here. We would save some delta V. There we go. Good. So we'll escape that way. We're basically in line with the sort of solar orbit over here, so we're leaving in the correct direction. It's going to be a 42-minute burn. Also, what's with my staging here? Look, my Delta V stats are all screwed up. That's... That's what's going on here. Hang on. Now that is the correct first stage to pop. I wonder if I haven't staged it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quick save. I'm actually going to hit the space bar. There we go. There we go. Okay, this is making so much more sense. Now our Delta V is improved because it's properly calculating all the stages. And we got rid of that extra cruft. Now we have 11,000 Delta V. I was going to say, also, how is this running out of um, electricity? It's not. It's just a glitch because we're not actually running that, that uh, ship. Okay. So that's our maneuver. So obviously, I'm not going to be doing these maneuvers manually because that would be tedious. I'm also not going to be recording this. That's 42 minute burn. Yeah. And I have to, um, 
have to stage halfway through. So I'm not going to be recording that maneuver. In, okay, in fact, I'm probably not going to be burning, uh, recording most of my maneuvers. Um, maybe I'll do like a time-lapse video if it works out. But yeah, 42 minutes because we have a thrust weight ratio of 0 0.04. Anything under 1 feels slow. Anything under 0.1 feels... I, I keep saying that word, glacial. And really, that's the way it feels here. Um, but there we have it. We are going to go ahead and do that. Once I escape the sphere of influence of Kerbin, then I'll be around the, the sun, Kerbol, at which point I'll be able to plan the, the Homan transfer to Jewel. Uh, again, we're not really in the optimal transfer window, so it might be a little bit more costly than normal, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. Yeah, see, it's saying energy remaining negative, but that's clearly not true. It's making tons of energy. I'll have to... Um, let me quick save. Let me switch to it, because I think we're close enough for it still. Seriously, though. Oh, I moused over the contracts tab, which means Kerbal's got it. There's a weird glitch here where it, like, recalculates in a terrible way. How do I, I really don't have electric charge. Stop research. Um... No, nope, not that way. So maybe if I turn for more exposure. I'm going to have to send these guys a, a proper... I'm going to have to send them a nuclear engine, clearly. Well, I can just do a little time warp here. I think they're going to be fine as long as I don't control them, but they were generating power just fine. Well... I guess what I'll do is I'll uh, stop the greenhouse again. Yeah, greenhouse does use a lot of power. Can I uh, can I be researching while this is going on? It was fine. It's very sensitive to the orientation of the solar panel, so clearly it just needs more. So we're not going to run the solar the uh, the greenhouse now. Um, after I execute my burn here, I'm going to make sure to send another module up here that's got more solar panels, but also um, probably one of my nuclear reactors. Again, I probably won't show that because, I mean, we've shown docking. It's not particularly exciting, but that's my plan. I'll get these guys more solar panels and a nuclear reactor to cover the um, um, the dead zones in between. And uh, we're going to execute that 42-minute burn from the Deep Space Explorer as well. So, thank you for watching this episode. I know it's a little shorter and there's not a whole lot going on, but I want to talk about my plans. I got this ship. So much liquid fuel. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention, these are um, procedural fuel tanks. Um... There's not, especially when it comes to pure liquid fuel tanks, I, there, there's not enough options in the default, uh, like, for sort of vanilla Kerbal Space Program. Um, I mean, I could have used regular fuel tanks and taken out the oxidizer to save weight, but then I still wouldn't have a whole lot of fuel, liquid fuel in there. And so there's a mod that's just called Procedural Parts, um, and it lets you just create your own fuel tanks of any, like, sort of size that you want. Uh, you can't just, like, put an arbitrary amount of fuel in there. You just pick the size. Like, I want it this long and with a radius of this, and it auto-calculates the correct amount of fuel for that. So it's completely balanced. It just lets you get things that fit the right size, and as a bonus, you get to choose exactly what kind of fuel type it carries. So it's not like wasting half of its storage space on oxidizer. This whole thing is all liquid fuel, which also really helps for making space planes. Um, which I would like to get a proper space plane to go and uh, resupply the, um, the space station at some point. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, folks. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.